Hey, what's up everyone? Dr. Bo here and today I wanted to share with you guys my top five blood tests that I run on men over the age of 40. You know, when you go to your normal medical doctor, they kind of run like these very generalized screenings. And what I found is that there are a few specific blood tests that are giving me a more full picture, so to speak, as far as what's going on with the man's overall health. And typically guys, these are a little bit different than just your normal like CBC type of blood test that your normal medical doctor would run. Now, before I get into any of that, I just want to let you guys know, as a disclaimer, I'm a practicing chiropractor. Yes, I run blood work on on lots of patients. Um, it's something that we routinely do. I enjoy it. I love to dive deeper to the root cause of a lot of issues with men in particular. So let's dive in. All right. Number one, the number one blood test that I have been running very, very much as of late is free testosterone. Now, a lot of people don't run this blood test. Number one, it's a little bit expensive, costs a hundred bucks to do it. But as a man who personally has had experience with it as well, low testosterone is a huge factor in a man's overall health. As you guys may or may not know, testosterone is responsible for things like muscle building, energy, uh, sex drive, those types of things. And what I'm seeing, especially in the last few years, especially since COVID, is that men's testosterone levels have consistently decreased over time, over time. So number one, guys, if you are a man who's feeling you know, fatigued, tired, low sex drive, decreased muscle mass, you go to the gym and you work out and you just feel like, man, I didn't do anything, I'm not seeing any results at all, definitely uh, go get your testosterone testosterone levels checked. There's different ways to treat it. And I can tell you that just that one test in so many of my patients has been such an eye opener to them. All right. The second test that I always recommend is something called C reactive protein. Now I have some notes here. I'll just read them for you guys so you understand. But C reactive protein is a blood test that measures the level of CRP, which is a protein that is produced in the liver in response to inflammation, primarily inflammation in the heart. You know, most commonly when people start having heart issues, they'll run a CRP to test a marker of the cardiovascular risk. Now, why do I like running CRP? Well, number one, obviously for heart cardiovascular, but it also gives us an overall kind of a, a generalized assessment as far as what's going on with the inflammatory markers of the person's body. So if a person is under an extreme amount of stress, their diet's terrible, they have a chronic underlying uh, autoimmune issue, what we'll see is that the CRP levels tend to be elevated and then it kind of says, hey, look, we need to dive in more and to do further testing. But CRP, uh, C-reactive protein is a blood test that, I, again, I'm running with a lot of my patients, not only for cardiovascular reasons, but for general overall inflammatory marker. All right, guys, the third one is a vitamin D blood test. Now, why do I measure vitamin D? Now, as you guys know, vitamin D is not necessarily a vitamin. It's actually a hormone that's produced in the body. Um, but what we are seeing is that when people's vitamin D levels have decreased significantly, that is leaving them to become more um, immune compromised. They get sick more frequently. Um, vitamin D is also a cofactor in that whole uh, cycle for energy production. Um, you know, vitamin D, as many of you guys know, is a deficiency also come common among people who have limited sun exposure. Now, what does that mean? That means that, look, a lot of us work indoors like this behind computer screens. They're not outside for 30 minutes a day having full body sun exposure. So we're seeing decreased amounts of vitamin D levels. And ultimately that leads to a whole bunch of uh, other uh, issues within the body. Now, I will tell you that out of 100 people where we run vitamin D, 90% of them, yes, 90 out of 100 people have some sort of low vitamin D levels. So I'm always telling people to take vitamin D. Now, it's not something you can quote unquote overdose on, um, I guess if you keep it like within normal limits, but if you're taking 5,000 to 10,000 IUs of vitamin D a day, that's not up to the toxic levels that we would see. But so many people have vitamin D issues that I definitely run that with most of, uh, most of my male patients in particular. All right, the uh, fourth one 
is one that we probably think about, and that is a lipid panel. A uh, lipid panel, also known as a cholesterol test, is a blood test that measures the certain levels of fats or lipids in our blood. It's important for many bodily functions, but there are certain types that can increase the risk of heart disease. So the, te the test typically uh, consists of your total cholesterol, that's the total overall level of cholesterol in the blood, including both good and bad quote unquote cholesterols. Your LDLs or your losers or your low density lipoproteins, um, these are the proteins that uh, can build up on the inside portions of those arterial walls. Those are the ones we talk about, you know, oh, I had, you know, 95% of Inclusion of three of my, uh, you know, of my veins, my heart. It's like no, 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 arteries, my heart. That, those, that's guys. That's what we're talking about. So the LDL. So we want to make sure we have low LDL levels. High LDL levels, uh, conversely, is not a good thing. And that's something that we want to uh, pay a special attention to. Uh, the HDLs are known as our good cholesterol. And this actually, your HDLs help to remove your LDLs from the bloodstream. So what we wanna see is a much higher number of HDLs versus LDL number. And then lastly, there's something called your triglyceroids. And your triglycerides, these are the types of fat, uh, types of fat found in the blood, high levels which have been linked to increased risk of heart disease. So guys, that basically means, hey look, if you have a whole bunch of triglycerides running around in your bloodstream, chances are it can get sticky and tie up onto something and that can lead to further cardiovascular and heart disease. All right guys, and number five, if you've been watching this video, I hope this has been informative to you. Um, please, if you like, ask me questions below. Like, comment, subscribe as they always talk about. Um, but all right, so number five. Number five is a glucose non-fasting blood test. And guys, what this measures is it measures the amount of glucose or sugars, blood sugars it's known, uh, in the blood at any time, regardless of when the patient has ate last. Now, I love to run fasted glucose, which means you can't eat for 12 hours before, but even a free glucose test is somewhat reliable. Um, a non-fasting glucose test uh, requires the person, like I said, to fast for 10, 8 to 12 hours. Non-fasting is usually a screening to check for diabetes or pre-diabetes. You guys, the big killers, quote unquote killers of males are, as we know, number one, heart disease, number two, diabetes, and number three, uh, cancers. Now, these other ones, testosterone, C-reactive protein, all of those things, those are lifestyle recommendations that I check. So not only as a doctor do I want to check like your basics to make sure you're quote unquote alive, but I want to make sure that you're living the lifestyle that you want as well. So just a quick recap, guys. Number one thing that I test with almost all males over the age of 40 is their free testosterone. Number two, C-reactive protein, checking for any inflammatory markers. Number three, vitamin D. Number four, a lipid panel. And number five, a glucose panel. All right, guys, if you have any questions about this panel, if you have done them yourselves, anything that's been eye-opening to you, I love the community that we have here, our ability to talk, communicate. I always jump in the comments and try to help you guys out if you have any questions. But please, let me know. How can I help you? What do you think of these three, five, these five tests? Have you ever had them ran? Any symptoms, questions like that? I'm here for you. Have a good one.